let me show you the first poncho I'll be teaching you on how to make this um, poncho doesn't have a name actually because I I didn't create the pattern the stitch pattern myself but this particular poncho was created from my head the whole calculation and everything was from my head which is the same secret I'm going to be sharing with you so that whenever you come across a stitch pattern online that you would love to work with even if it's a poncho you want to create with it you would know how to create it actually making of poncho is not hard it just has to do with calculations and measurements so to get accuracy you have to be able to okay so making of poncho just has to do with um, measurements and calculation basically and then in making this poncho the increase pattern is just in two basic places which is the front and back and I will be showing you um, in a short while let me take you close to the poncho so that you see what we are going to be working with so now the increase pattern for this um, poncho is actually here this middle I'm sure you can see the increase at this point I have four stitches in one stitch that's for this normal row then for the filet row I have two in one then the rest has one 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 then in this normal row after the increase here we don't increase anywhere here anymore it just go one 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 after the other ignore this part this is um, I'm trying to create a a hoodie so this is the hoodie part I just started but now this is the neck part of our poncho so I'm going to be showing you how to do that by practicalizing on one of our participants today Agatha hi so Agatha is going to get up for me to measure her so that you can see how to work on this poncho when you want to make the poncho so Here, and then turn your back. Now I'm using Agatha because I'm the one measuring her. If you're to measure yourself, you can either measure from the back like this, like this, or you can just measure from the front. But then when it comes to the front, you can't really get the accuracy because our back is, you know, bent in towards the front. So it's better for you to use the back measurement. So to measure Agatha, I have to measure from her shoulder to her other shoulder, which is this way. Just the way you would want the poncho to lay on you properly. So measuring Agatha shoulder to shoulder is giving us 18 inches. Bringing it close, this is 18 inches. 18 inches. This is how it would fall on her if she were to make this poncho. But now, we don't make poncho based on one side. So we have to times this 18 by two. So when you times it by two, you get the whole circumference from her shoulder here, over to this other shoulder, and over to the front, and back to this shoulder. So when we times um, 18 by two, it will give us a measurement of 36, which is our whole shoulder to shoulder front and back measurements this is how to get the exact measurement for you or any of your clients that you might be making a poncho for so just tell them if you're not with them tell them to measure from shoulder to shoulder and send you the measurement or if they are with you you measure it just this way shoulder to shoulder you will have this video with you hopefully you don't delete it so it will be a reference point to you anytime you get confused so let's conclude thank you Agatha now to make a poncho you need that if you will be working with your own pattern if you will be making your own pattern these are the things you would need. I'll show you in a bit. You need, of course, 
yarn, a pair of scissors, a writing pad, a calculator, tape rule, and your desired hook size for your project, depending on the yarn size you would be using. Now I'm using a worsted weight yarn, which is equal to the exact size for Ye Ye Extra. But if you want to use two strands of um, Ye Ye Regular, it's still not a problem. All you need to do is chain up enough, chain up enough to cover up for the measurements, for the shoulder measurements that you took for your client. We had 18 and when we times it by two, we had 36. So you just chain up enough to make up for 36. Now let me show you how to measure up to 36. Okay. So I already have um, some chains made up. I already chained up some. Let's see how much I've chained up already. So you place your chain on a flat surface like this without it um, tangling. And then you measure. You place your beginning of your tape rule on the tail, just on the tail of your chain. And then you get the exact size of chain you've been able to work with. I've been able to chain up 33.5 already. So I have about um, two more inches to go. Okay. Sorry, guys. We have to do a behind-the-scenes calculation before we continue so that we don't lead you astray. Okay, so I've been able to chain up 36 inches long worth of chain. So let's be sure, let's confirm it together. 36 inches long. Now, we have um, 155 chains equals to 36 inches using worsted weights and a 3.5 um, crochet hook. We're able to chain up 155 chains to sum up to this 36 inches. Now, in making this um, poncho, your chain has to be even number. It has to be a number that can be divided by two, working with this type of poncho. It has to be divided by two. So in situations like this, whereby 155 cannot be divided by two you you are now left to either reduce one or add one now in situations like this because it's yarn and then it tends to expand eventually we don't add what we do now is reduce one chain and then you'll be left with 154 chains now 154 154 divided by 2 equal to 77 right yes so now what we're going to do is we're going to slip stitch this chain to the beginning of the chain when we started but in doing this you have to make sure that it doesn't twist we want a very straight chain so you have to trace it from the beginning up to the end to make sure that when you slip stitch, it doesn't twist up together. So can you see? Now this is the point I'm going to slip stitch together to the beginning. So I'll just insert my hook and slip stitch. Now, depending on the stitch pattern you'll be working with, if it's a single crochet pattern you want to work with for this project, that's fine. All you need to do is just chain up one. If it's a double crochet, you chain up two. If it's a half double crochet, you chain up one. So now we're going to use a stitch marker. We're going to use a stitch marker to divide this 
chained by two. Remember, we had 154 chain. 154 chains divided by two, it gave us 77. So now we're going to count 77 chains from this slip stitch up to 77. So this slip stitch already counts as one. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, seven. Now this is our 77th chain. So just mark it. This is half of your work. Half, half. So now we have 77 on this side, 77 on this side. Now what we are going to do is, you remember I told you that the increase for this poncho we are working on has to do with front and back. Now for example, let's say this is the front of, I mean this is the back of our poncho. Then this automatically becomes the front of our poncho. So if we must start the increase, it's going to start at the first row which i'll be showing you now so what i usually do in starting my poncho is i work the first row with single crochet because it gives me a base for my work so what i do is now i start my increase in this same stitch for the slip stitch because we already counted that it's the first stitch in this work so what i do is one single crochet remember to hide in your end one single crochet to start with chain up one and go back into the same stitch and one single crochet now this is the beginning of my increase pattern so i am not going to increase anymore until I have gotten to the second part of this poncho, which is going to be the 78th stitch, not the one we actually marked here. It's going to be the 78th stitch after, I mean, on this row. So now we've started with one single crochet, chain one, one single crochet in the first stitch. Now let's work single crochet into the remaining stitches until we get to one stitch after the next mark stitch so i'll see you when i am done when i get to that point so we've worked our 77th we've worked up to our 77th chain already this was the place that was marked this was the place that was marked and now because we started our increase in the first stitch here, we cannot repeat it on the 77th um, stitch. We'll now move on to the 78th stitch. Remember why? Because we divided this chain into two, which gave us 77 on one part and 77 on the other part. So we bought our first 77. Now we're starting on our next 77 so now this is the beginning of the next 77 which is now the 78th stitch here so now we're going to repeat the first increase we did here into the 77th i mean 78th stitch so single crochet chain up one and single crochet back into the stitch and you see that and then no more increase we'll just walk one single crochet in each stitch across until we get to the last stitch here so now work this and then we'll meet at the last stitch so that i can teach you how to slip stitch and work your next row so now we've been able to work up our 154 chains Remember, we started with an increase in the first stitch, and then I told you to mark your 77th chain so that we'll divide it by two. Then after it, we now start working on the first stitch of the next 77 
chain, which we started with in 78th chain. And then we repeated the increase we did on this. So we repeated the same type of increase we did here on the 78th chain. And this is what it looks like. So now we have two points of increase. The first chain we started with and then the 78th chain. We did an increase of 2-2. Two, two. So we now have how many stitches? 154 plus 2. We now have 156 stitches all together in this um, first row. So at every point in time on every row, these are the two parts that we're going to increase in. Now, remember the first um, single crochet you started with over here. This was the chain I started with. Now, I'm not talking about this chain. I'm talking about this first single crochet we started with before we chained up one and then worked another single crochet into it. Now, this first single crochet is the one we're going to make a slip stitch to join this piece and get a perfect circle so now this is a slip stitch that we have done it's now complete now this is how row one is now this whole row one is just a background this is not the main work the main work starts in row two and in row two we're going to change the stitch pattern from single crochet to a double crochet stitch pattern now to do that we are going to make another slip stitch into the chain that we did now this is the first slip stitch we did now this is the chain between the two increase of single crochet we did at the first stitch of the previous row we're going to make another slip stitch so that it takes us to the middle of the chain now we are in the middle of the chain we are going to chain up two because we are changing the stitch pattern now because we are changing the stitch pattern to a double crochet pattern and every chain at the beginning every chain at the beginning of every row counts as a stitch so eventually we are going to be slip stitching into the chain stitch from the second row up to the last row now but now if we chain up two it's going to be two shots because if we slip stitch we will now be left with one stitch so we're going to chain up three instead so by the time we chain up three and then we finish this row and come back we'll slip stitch to this last chain three so this one this chain three already counts as one double crochet so we yarn over and go back into the same chain space and work one double crochet now this is already two double crochet on its own remember I told you every chain three on every row counts as the first stitch so now take note of this row and this increase pattern on this second row because that is what you will continue with Remember on this row we did chain uh, single crochet chain one single crochet now it's we're not going to repeat this style of increase here we're going to change it to two double crochet chain two and then two double crochet into the chain space can you see that can you see one double crochet one double crochet chain two one double crochet one double crochet all in the previous chain space then we are now going to walk one one double crochet into each stitch across until we get to the next increase part no 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 so no more increase you just work one one in each stitch until you get to the next increase part when you get to the next increase part 
you're going to walk into the chain space two double crochet chain two two double crochet now this is how you would continue until you get to the next chain space so you're going to walk one one each in every stitch until you get to this increase part this is the next increase part so you're going to walk into this single crochet then when you come to the chain space you're going to walk two double crochet into this chain space two chains and two double crochet into it which means at the end of the increase you'll have four double crochet in one stitch so i'll meet you when we get back to this point whoa you got 100 and what 63 using what size of crochet hook i use four inch four mm sorry four mm with what size of yarn with uh, yes yeah extra. yeah extra and what's your shoulder to shoulder measurement 36 36 and you got 163 163 have you been able to get your measurements no, okay i'll come back to you sharon so you use them 3.0 mm hook right with how many strands of yarn yeah, yeah, extra or regular? Regular. Regular. So how many chains did you arrive at? 164. 164. Using, um, okay, for what shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder measurements? 16. 16. Okay. 16 times 2 gives you what? 32. 32. Precious, what about you? 32. 32 as well. Yes. What hook size are you using? 3.0 and how many chains did you chain up to get your 32 long inches of your shoulder to shoulder length all right so we've gotten to the the um, part of the chain so now this is our last um, single crochet before the chain now we're going to repeat the increase we did on this side into this chain as well so yarn over go through the chain sorry i still have one more to walk into okay then the chain so yarn over go through the chain one double crochet yarn over go into the stitch as well now we have two double crochet then we're going to chain two one two then back into the same stitch one double crochet and another double crochet so now we have how many double crochet we have four double crochet into one stitch that is the increase then we're going to repeat the we're going to repeat this part into the remaining stitches left which you're going to start from the next stitch closest to you which is this one one double crochet one double crochet one double crochet you repeat this until you get to the last stitch which is going to be this last stitch then you slip stitch to the chain to the top of the chain three that you did when you were starting this so i'll meet you back at this point so that i'll tell you how to do the last um the, the third row which is going to be a filet um, row so I'll, you, you have to take note of how to make this because the next row is going to be different from this and this whole project is going to be a repetition of this row and the next row on every row so you're going to do a repetition of this and the next row when you get there so I'm sure most of you must have gotten to this part by now we're done 
what okay. our last um, single crochet into the last stitch which is here so now we're going to slip stitch to the first stitch of the chain three that we did at the beginning this is one two then this is the third so we're going to make a slip stitch into this <laughs> slip stitch into the chain can you see we're going to slip stitch into the chain now if we slip stitch and then just continue the second row at this point it's going to give us a different look here at this point at this starting point than this and we want the whole increase to be on a line so what we are going to do to achieve this to be on it on a straight line just as it would here all we need to do now is make another slip stitch into the next double crochet remember we did a slip stitch to the chain so now we're going to do a slip stitch another slip stitch to the double crochet even still it's not in the middle so we need to make another slip stitch into the chain space one slip stitch into the, the chain space so we go into the chain space and make another slip stitch now we have it in the middle so we we'll start with another chain three remember i told you that every point in time your chain three counts as your first double crochet so now we are done with a um, what what do we call this stitch again? Sorry, I forgot. With a solid row, we are done with a solid row of um crush of, of crochet in this poncho. So we want to make a filet stitch, just as you have seen it on the poncho earlier. So now to start a filet stitch on the filet row, the increase, I mean the chain, changes from changes from. Three double and uh, three chains to five chains. Why? Because this already counts as one double crochet. So we need chain two to add it up. So we chained up five, which already um, stands at one double crochet and chain two. So now in a filet stitch, instead of having four double crochet in the increased part in the filet stitch we're going to have just two double crochet this already stands as one double crochet chain two so we would add one more into the chain can you see one double crochet chain two one double crochet then chain one then walk one double crochet into this first stitch then chain one then now we're going to skip one skip this skip this and walk into this can you see chain one skip one skip this and walk into this can you see that so you continue chain up one skip one you continue with this filet row until you get to the next increase which is going to be this then when you get to this increase you walk one double crochet chain two one double crochet then chain one then you walk into the next stitch after you do that you chain up one skip one and then you continue the process like this the reason why we had to start in this one instead of skipping it since it's a filet stitch is because it will help in increasing this part since we are having just two instead of four of the solid row so please i'll meet you up when you get to this point